today we are going to do quantitative test. I can't spell. Uh, so quantitative. Quantitative has an N in it because we're going to get a number. We want a quantity. We want to know how much is in something. So we're going to have a look at an example using glucose. And I need some colours. So if we have a sample um, and we have some sugar in that sample, then obviously what we can do get the lid off this, uh, is add some Benedict. And when we add some Benedict, it will react and we will get a coloured precipitate. We will get a brick red precipitate. We'll get a brick red precipitate form. Now, that's great, but we don't know how much is in that sample. So what we need to do is have some knowns. So what we do is we do this reaction with some standards, with some samples that we know the concentration of. So this is our unknown. So what we do is we take some samples. Um, and so we get some known concentrations. Now I'm just going to work on percentages. So we'll we'll just work on I don't know 50%, 40%, 30%, and 20%. Now that could be um, grams per decimeter cubed. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we'll just have a nice simple example to begin with. So. What you do is you add Benedict to all of these samples and when you do that you will get a precipitate. Pen. Now the precipitate that you get is in proportion to how much sugar is there. So if you have more sugar you will get more precipitate. If you have less sugar you will get less precipitate and then the ones in between will obviously be in between that. Now what that precipitate represents, if you remember, if you haven't looked at some of the other videos, go and have a look at the other ones. Um, if you remember, that precipitate is formed from copper. So copper 2 plus is reduced to copper plus, and that's what that precipitate is. So if you have more sugar, you'll get more reduction of the copper, and so you'll get more precipitate. So what that means is if you take this liquid off and get rid of that precipitate and you can spin it in a centrifuge or you can just filter it, then what you end up with is just the blue. So these are our four um, samples, A, B, C and D. So what you get is some blue stuff. Now the blue stuff represents unreacted. So this is the Benedict that has reacted to form a precipitate. What you tip off is what's left, the copper that's left, the copper that has not been reacted. So if you have a lot of precipitate, a lot of the copper reacted, you're not going to have very much left over. So you get a very little bit of blue. If you have not very much precipitate, so not very much of the copper has reacted, you're going to have a lot left over and so it's going to look very blue very dark blue and then you have everything in between okay so you can see the blue that you've got left is kind of inversely proportional to how much precipitate you had so what we can do is we can put these into a colorimeter now there are two different ways you can do this you can look at absorbance or you can look at transmission now, transmission is how much light gets through. So if we look at transmission, if you've got not very much blue, a lot of the light is going to get through. If you've got a lot of blue, not very much of the light is going to get through. And so you're going to have this gradient, this scale in between. If you look at absorbance, absorbance is how much of the light is actually absorbed by your sample. So if you've got not very much blue, not very much of that light is going to be absorbed. You're shining the light through this sample, not very much blue stuff to kind of get in the way of the light. 
and so more of that uh, light will go through so your absorbance will be lower. This one, if you shine a light through that sample, more of that light is going to be absorbed and so you're going to get a much greater absorbance. So you can plot these on a graph. So if we look at the absorbance, if we've got, um, so 0, 20, 40, 60, for example, could have just done 10, 20, 30, 40, never mind. Uh, let's just do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So if we have a look at the um, 20, it's going to have a really high absorbance. So it's going to be up there somewhere. When we look at the 50, it's going to have a much lower absorbance. So it's going to be down there somewhere. And so what you end up with is something of a curve. Okay? So what you can do is you can do the same to your unknown sample. You react it. When you tip off the blue, you'll have a certain amount of blue left. So if we tip this off, we're going to have um, probably about that much blue. So what you do is you put that in the colorimeter and you get a value. So this is your colorimeter uh, readings. This is your glucose concentration. So what you do is you put that into the colorimeter and you get a value. You find that value on here somewhere and you go along until it hits your curve, you go down, and that is the concentration of your unknown sample. So that's how colorimetry works. You have to have some known samples. You add Benedicts, you take off the precipitate, to get rid of the precipitate, get rid of the red, um, you keep the blue, you put it into a colorimeter, you get a value, and you plot a graph. You then take your unknown sample, you react it with Benedict, you tip off the blue, once you've filtered it, you get rid of the precipitate, you find that value in a colorimeter, you find that value on your graph, you take it along to the curve, you take it down, that is your unknown. But you have to have some knowns first. So that is quantitative. Now there are two um, other things that you can look at. You can look at qualitative, qualitative, and semi-quantitative. Now, qualitative, it's there or it isn't. You get a positive reaction with Benedict's, you know you've got a reducing sugar. And so that would be a qualitative test. But this, we can do, and we can make it semi-quantitative. So semi-quantitative, I don't know if you remember, but I said the colours, you can get a green precipitate, a yellow, an orange, or a brick red precipitate. They are in order of how much sugar is there. So if you get, a, um, you get some known samples, you do it, you get your different colours, you get your unknown, and you can put them sort of in order. So it wouldn't tell you... Um, precisely how much was in there, but it would give you an idea if it's, or if you had several samples, you could put them in order of increasing um, glucose concentration. You can also do semi-quantitative um, using the precipitate. So qualitative, it's there, it's not. Semi-quantitative, you can put the colours in order, and so you can have increasing quantities. The other semi-quantitative, with the precipitate, you can actually measure the mass of precipitate. So if it has more sugar, more reducing sugar, you'll get more precipitate, you'll get a higher mass. If there's less sugar, you'll get less precipitate. So you can also have a look at the precipitate. And again, you could, if you wanted to, with this one, get some knowns, do the mass, and plot a graph. And you could then do the same with your unknown and read it off the graph. It would not be as anywhere near as accurate um, as taking off the, uh, the um, liquid and putting it into uh, um, a colorimeter. But you could, if you wanted to, just put the masses in order or you could plot a graph and find out roughly what your, you could estimate how much sugar was in there. So you've got 
Qualitative, it's there, it isn't. Semi-quantitative, you can get an idea of how much is in there by looking at the colours or measuring the mass of the precipitate. Fully quantitative, you do the reaction with your knowns, you get the blue, you plot it on the graph, you do the same with your unknown, you get the blue, you read it off the graph to find the concentration. Okay?